They are banged up at linebacker, especially Hugh Green, who has a real bad fungus on his foot. They're trying to remedy that situation. John McKay says that he hopes he's going to be able to go all the way today, but they're playing on an artificial surface, which could make it more difficult. Looks like it's they're ready to go, and I think it's hotter than 81 degrees down there, don't you, Tim? <laughs> For 51. So the Bears offensively will bring out Jim McMahon with Max Suey and Walter Payton. The wide receivers, Dennis McKinnon and Willie Galt. Across the front, Jay Saldi, the starter at tight end. Covert, Mark Bortz for Noah Jackson, who is now at Tampa Bay. Jay Hilgenberg, Kurt Becker, and Keith Van Horn will turn up in the offensive starting unit of the Buccaneers today. First down, Chicago. Play action. McMahon, two good fakes. Payton gets about three yards as they had a lot of razzle-dazzle going there, Johnny Morris, but the Buccaneers' defense stabilized itself real well, didn't give Peyton much room to go. Bears offense. This is a fired up Buccaneer team. They're coming off a 2-14 season. They want to prove that they were not that flag, bad. Flag. flag on the play as Matt Suey tries to get wide left. He's buried after about a two-yard pickup. Logan again, that very quick-footed nose tackle ranging out to make the stop on Suey on a second and six. And a long yard. Suey has the first down and a gain of about six yards. He has one year to go on the existing one, and most everybody agrees that he's got to produce this year. First down pass. A man intended for golf off the mark. Coming in on the coverage with Beasley Reese, acquired from the Giants a year ago by the Tampa Bay Bucks and, and Willie Golf. Bashnagel in the slot left. First third down for the Chicago Bears opening series. Lots of time for McMahon. Going deep for McKinnon. Incomplete. The ball was there on the coverage. Cedric Brown, number 34. Terrific pass by Jim McMahon. But it'll be fourth down. Count on this fourth down. Extremely long. And Finzer hits from his 34-yard line. Bobbled by Bell. Bell apparently recovered the football near the 16-yard line of Tampa Bay. Theo Bell, usually sure-handed wide receiver, returned punt, dropped it. And Calvin Thomas recovered for the Bears. Okay, Theo Bell, who also dropped one the last week against Miami, so that's... Uh two in a couple of games he just didn't get the handle on it the bears are coming down you see all those dark jerseys and they had the percentages with them as calvin thomas willie galt uh, there's calvin thomas number 33 the bears got hurt with his recollection and he is thrilled to be playing with the chicago bears third down play advantage lots of time intended for mckinnon overthrow cedric brown number 34 on the coverage 15 yard line brian bashnagel is the holder for the bears It'll be a 29-yard attempt for Thomas. And he has it. So the Chicago Bears, helped by a Tampa Bay fumble, have opened the scoring with 11-15 remaining in the first period. The Bears three, the Buccaneers nothing. Safety for the Chicago Bears. Offensively for the Buccaneers, it'll be Jack Thompson at quarterback with Edger Armstrong getting the fullback start. James Wilder with a bruised thigh at running back. Gerald Carter and Kevin House are the wide receivers. Across the front, the outstanding Jimmy Giles and Sanders, Noah Jackson, the former Bear, Wilson, Farrell, and Thomas. A young, revamped offensive line. Receivers are in. Terry Tuttle, number 81, joining House and Carter. House in motion. They give it to Wilder. He had a good hole and picks up the first down with a gain of seven. It looks like uh, Mr. Wilder's okay. Of course, he has two preseason games with that blue sky. House in motion again. Double tight end this time. And Wilder hit behind the line of scrimmage. Dan Hampton. Followed immediately by Richard Dent. And you can see him follow the guard, Noah Jackson. Noah Third down and long 11. Leo Bell and Kevin House are both flanked to the right side. Giles and Jerry Bell are the tight end. Oh, one step back. Thompson just got it away in the general direction of Theo Bell. Otis Wilson and Tyrone Keyes had quite a rush on Thompson. And so the Bears showing that they can play defense with Tampa Bay. Bay. 37-yard punt by Garcia below his average. 
Suey and Peyton in the I formation. Jim McMahon under pressure from Cannon. Runs it out and is close to the first down yardage. The Bears have a 3 nothing lead and a second and less than a football. And they give it to Suey. Dewey gets the first down and picks up three more to the 45-yard line where Cecil Johnson, number 56, the eight-year veteran from Pittsburgh, made the stop. They first down there from their 45. Peyton in motion. Pitch out to Suey. And the Buccaneers do an outstanding job, spreading it out and stripping through to drop him for a loss. In motion, used him as a blocker. There's that defensive boss, Wayne Fonts, and uh, what a... An outstanding job he's done with this defensive team. They've been... Man, off to Stewie out of the backfield. Good coverage again by the Bucks. They hold him to a gain of about seven. Well short of the first down at the 50-yard line. Scott Brentley, the linebacker, making the hit. Mike Washington coming in as a nickelback. On third down for the Bears. Peyton trying to get wide. Peyton trying to pick his way to that marker. Got to the 45. It'll be close to the first down yardage. Uh, there's John McKay, who must be saying to himself, Johnny, uh, you know, what else can happen? I mean, I went through all of this last year. I hope this is not deja vu. I'm sure he's primarily concerned about Mike Washington right now. But he had that incredible string of injuries last season that was a large, in large measure, the reason why they had a 2-14 and season. And here it is, game one, and a, a key guy like Washington, a former starter who backs up both the corners and plays the nickel, uh, he's just, McKay must be wondering, hey, why me and why young uh, Mike Washington? By Atlanta, and it is now 7-5. to five. And we're ready to go here. First down for the Bears at the 45 of Tampa Bay. In this direction, they go back the other way to Stewie. And Stewie picks up six on the play before he is stopped by Cecil Johnson, number 56, the left outside linebacker. Walter Payton has nine yards so far on three carries. Second and four, McKinnon in motion. Payton right up the middle, and he picks up two more. And his, he got close to the 36-yard line, met there by David Logan, number 76, that active nose man. Trying to count some of that here as we go along. He's a key factor in the middle of that Tampa Bay defense. Peyton spins his way for the first down. He was hit right at the marker and then spun and picked up about a, picked up about another half yard. Leroy Selman with the safety Cedric Brown making the hit on him, but not before Walter got the first down. Well, they dropped Peyton for a yard loss. In that play, second and 11 Bears, and Suey out of the backfield has a first down inside the 20 to the 17-yard line of Tampa Bay. Well, you can see the Buccaneers have only six yards of offense here, and we've almost completed the first quarter. Third down, a long six. Green pass for Peyton, and he's forced out. Very good reaction by Byron Braggs, who stayed with him the whole time. Number 71, acquired from the Green Bay Packers. This one will be spotted at the 25-yard line. 35-yard attempt for Bob Thomas. And he missed it wide to the right. It looked like there was a bit of a problem with the hold by Brian Bashnagel. And Thomas missed the field goal try from 35. So with 1.14 remaining in the first quarter, the score remains the Chicago Bears 3, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers nothing. Giants Stadium, second and seven. Out of the eye formation, play action. Thompson has time and a tiny cast of ball. Picked off by Richardson and inbound. Yes, Mike Richardson on the tip. Theo Bell turned. The ball was right where it should have been. He didn't make the catch and it popped right into the hands of Richardson at the sideline. Things are going the Bears' way. He fumbled a punt return and caused the interception there. Walter Payton flips trying to make that cut back upfield and wound up with a gain of maybe two. I should mention one thing. When you're catching the ball over there, looking back from that direction, you're looking right into the sun. Soldier Field. Bears on the interception by Mike Richardson have the ball in Buck territory. Intended for McKinnon, and it is intercepted by Cedric Brown. Brown brings it back upfield for Tampa Bay to his 20-yard line. Let's 
ball just kind of hung up there in the vicinity of Dennis McKinnon, and Cedric Brown tracked it down in the first game. Cedric Brown has the Bucks at their 20-yard line, and this oh. is James Wilder with a big hole, and a, a trip up by Mike Richardson, but a gain of about nine yards for Wilder. You know, Johnny, that is just the seventh offensive play of the football game for Tampa Bay, and we're into the second quarter. First down of the first period. Tight ends are in. Giles and rookie Jay Carroll, number 86. Oh! And a less than a yard was oh, what they needed, what but a, they didn't get it. What a play by Dan Hampton. He uh, right behind in that listing will be Dan Hampton of the Chicago Bears, with maybe only one or two others in the same category. Armstrong and Wilder are the running backs, and Wilder is stacked up again, still trying to get the first Wilder. down. This time he got it. James Wilder gets it to the 30-yard line and a first down for Tampa Bay. Period. Gets the intercept and uh, now finds himself having to make big yardage on third down to keep the drive going. Thompson takes off one sack attempt. Carter makes the catch. Carter, touchdown. Gerald Carter. Jack Thompson to Gerald Carter. What a play as the Bears nearly had Thompson down about five yards deep. Oh, first to maintain his balance after he took a hit coming from the right side of your screen. There comes, that was Richard Dent. He maintained his balance and still threw it 60 yards down the air, down the field, and Carter made the grab. Terry Schmidt tries for the dive here, number 44, but Carter goes in for the touchdown, the longest pass reception of his career in the NFL. We have 12-15 to play. In the first half here at Soldier Field in Chicago, the Buccaneers seven, the Chicago Bears three. Ankle and a foot injury, but as we expected, they've all stayed in there. Second and nine. McMahon running out of the pocket. Can still throw, and now it's dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Tried to give himself a second chance to make a pass instead of taking off. And uh, the good reaction by Hugh Green, number 53, prevented him from getting anywhere. Uh, call by referee Fred Silva, but they have given the Bears a pickup out to the 26-yard line and a first down. So a damaging penalty taken by the Buccaneers there for Bay. Second and nine. Rush from Selman off to Peyton and Peyton individually making a great job. Now gets a block, but he is stopped by Selman on a second effort. You said it right. On a second effort, as Peyton was about ready to break loose, and Selman is the one who got over Jimbo Covert, number 74, 24, blocking. Here's 74 at the block. He gets around him, forces McMahon to adjust, and then throws the pass, and Peyton gets away from two or three players there. And here comes number 63 from the backside to prevent a long run. And, boy, he puts the clamps around him. He wasn't going to let him squeeze away from him. Leroy Selman, a great defensive play by Selman, who... Well, he has 70 sacks in his five-year career. You saw Cecil Johnson nearly drop Peyton for a loss. Three wide receivers. Peyton finds McKinnon. McKinnon has the first down to the 40-yard line. A little scramble again for McMahon, and he makes it pay off for the first down as he bears 40. Literally not having the ball at all in the first period except for one series. Swing pass for Peyton. Peyton runs right over his tackler, John Holt, number 21. And by pulling his way past Holt, he nearly picked up the first down. It's a nine-yard gain where they spot it. It's a mistake. So it is second down. And about six. They give it to Peyton. He gets a good block on the corner. Has a first down. Walter Peyton to the 45. I believe it was Van Horn who had a real good block on the corner. The inside. Now you're going to see here comes 78 on the right of your screen. There is Castillo, 23, knocking down the interference. But there wasn't that normal pursuit that the Buccaneers have from the uh, inside linebackers, and Peyton was it. 8-17 remaining first half. Bucks lead 7-3, big hole for Stewie. Inside the 35 to the 34, where Beasley Reese makes an ankle tackle. 29, you'll see him right. Come in here, 29, and block Scott Brantley out of the play, and that allowed Stewie to go through the hole and get down the field. Little Dennis Gentry. 
Galvin Thomas comes in next Chicago. We can see Walter bent over on the sideline with a trainer attending to him. Grant Anderson is in the lineup. Wide receiver for the Bears. A pass out to Gentry. Shakes off one tackle. And works his way up the sideline. Looks like he has a first down. Dennis Gentry. Gentry's still in there. And McMahon has to wave him over. He was lined up improperly, but he has the ball and gets the first down. What a job by the third-year man, Gentry. He was lined up to the left, and McMahon had to get him over where he should have been. He got the handoff and got the first down. The three on a bomb from Thompson to Gerald Carter. They have not had the ball much at all in this first half, but they have the lead. Whoop, busted play, McMahon. Trying to get a receiver downfield is chased out of bounds by Hugh Green. A broken play there for the Chicago Bears. You don't want to see that happen. Bad foot. Norris Thomas is in for Jeremiah Castile. Rolling left on second and 13. The pass to McKinnon. And it's complete, although he dropped it. He was already out of bounds, having made the catch inbounds. John Holt, number 21 on the tackle. Three at the... 15-yard line of Tampa Bay. Suey in motion. And a quick roll into the corner for McKinnon. Oh. Dropped the ball. Dennis McKinnon dropped the ball at the four-yard line. McMahon is 10 of 14. He's had one interception, and he had a bad drop there by McKinnon. Thomas from the 23-yard line. A 33-yard field goal is good. And so... Thomas hits his second of three attempts with 5.45 remaining. The Bucks lead by one, 7-6. to six. They're on the coverage. When they see that on the film, so I wish they had given it to Wilder. He had a huge yeah. hole. The punt by Garcia taken by Jeff Fisher, and Fisher gets back to the 45-yard line of the Chicago Bears, where Ken Kaplan reserved offensive lineman number 79 made the tackle. There is 3.58 remaining. In the first half of play. That's complete to Willie Galt. For a first down and then some to the 36-yard line. Well, Norris Thomas, Thomas was playing. Yeah, way back. Man is 11 of 17 for 90 yards. Good shot to Payton. Payton jumps over one would-be tackler. Gets to the 30-yard line for a gain of... Close to seven on the play. Keith Van Horn with a good block. Bears have had the football most in this first half of play. Dewey. Beasley Reese finally got him. Bears fans love that piece of running. Get to the end zone. Takes a good look at the run, but he got in. Touchdown. Jim McMahon really stuck his nose in there. He might have been hurt. He took a real good shot at the one-yard line. I don't know. It might have been planned, but look at that. Everybody went with it. McMahon got around the horn, got hit, and boy, who was that? The last one that got on there. I think As Hugh Green. Thomas Hugh Green, 53. A touchdown run by Jim McMahon. The point after by Thomas makes it 13 to 7 as McMahon getting some attention on the sideline. He seems to be more dazed than anything. I know, I'm not sure that it's a specific injury. I think it's over the bikes. First down. That is James Wilder stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. There'll be a loss on the play. Mike Singletary, number 50, the middle linebacker. Gain on that play by Wilder. Thompson to Giles. First down, Tampa Bay out near midfield. Big Jimmy Giles, 6'3", 245 pounds. Al Harris, the linebacker, forcing him out, but the Buccaneers stop the clock and have a first down. Let's see where they spot it. Thompson forced out of the pocket. He'll run with it. Has the first down and gets out of bounds with Richardson in pursuit. So Jack Thompson, not known as a runner for the second game in a row, picks up a first down on the run. He did that against Miami last week. Down at the Bears, 38. Deep drop for Thompson. Up the middle complete. That's Kevin House. And he has another first down as Fensick 
Nearly cut him in half with a tackle. And a timeout called by the Buccaneers. Two receivers out to the left. Carter and Kevin House. Now Carter in motion back to the slot. Thompson forced out of the pocket. And will be, well, was nearly dropped by Hartenstein. Got away from him and back to the line of scrimmage. Finally pulled down by Singletary. Jerry Bell are the tight ends with one setback. Carter and House, the wide receivers. Third down, big play for Tampa Bay. Thomas Thompson gets time, intended for Giles, intercepted. Gary Fensick down the sideline. Thompson cuts him off, and he's tackled from behind. A ball tipped out of Giles' hand the second time today. It led to a Bears interception, five-yard line. And plenty of timeouts. Bell off to Suey, and Suey coughed up the football. Tampa Bay has it back. Well, we have had a turn of events here. We had two interceptions follow each other earlier in this first half, one team to the other, and now the Bears are giving it right back to the Bucks this time. Until late in the second half, in the first half. This is Wilder. Wilder shaking loose, and... Fensick made the grab over midfield as Wilder ran through three Bear defenders and has a first down as time expires out at midfield, so they'll get no farther. Long setback. Carter out to the right, House to the left. Short drop and a pass tip intended for the tight end, Jerry Bell and Dan Hampton. All 6'5", 270 of them got a big paw up on it and split off the line. Carter in motion. Blitz, a blitz on and... Thompson got away from the first man, but not away from Mike Hartenstein. Looked like Steve McMichael had the initial rush on him, and uh, he set it up for his line mate, Mike Hartenstein. Thompson, and again, that one is tipped, and Singletary intercepts. time he's done that and this one came right down in the hands of Mike Singletary for the Chicago Bears at the Bucks 20 Walter Payton gets inside the 15 to the 14 I think they'll keep it on the ground Payton again flag down Payton to the 10 yard line gain of five more 74 Jimbo Covert the Offensive left tackle. To give them four down linemen. Mark Cotney has come in as the extra back. The fan runs out of time. Now finds wide open Willie Gump. Boy, he was very close to being across the line of scrimmage, but not so as Willie Gump cradled that ball in it was so easy almost dropped it one remains in the third period here under cloudy skies now at soldier field there's 20 tampa bay seven not ready to return the buccaneers injury buck hits them again james wilder barrels out off left tackle and gains about seven yards was in front take it, take it, take it. jack thompson oh bad pass picked up And he dipped to the outside, and Thompson threw it deeper down the field. Harris, just like a receiver, grabbed that ball, took off the field, and has made a great switch from playing defensive end to linebacker this year, and has come through to put the Bears in great shape on the four-yard line. Al Harris, who has been plagued by injuries throughout his career, and uh, gladly made the switch from a defensive lineman. He's a very tall linebacker, but he can run like the oh. Takes it to the four-yard line, first and goal. Rolling out is McMahon. There goes McMahon for that corner again. This time, he got out of bounds on an ankle tackle by John Cannon. Third and goal. There was a loss of about a half yard on the play. Emery Moorhead in motion. Suey again, diving. Touchdown. What 
20, 7 to 7, Chicago. Steve DeBerg coming into the lineup now for the Buccaneers to see if he can get something going as they trail by 20 points here. That's for sure. The offensive ineffectiveness. Jay Carroll and Jimmy Giles double tight ends. DeBerg to Wilder swinging out of the backfield. Breaks one tackle and makes a good effort to get to the 39-yard line. Short of the first down by about a yard. Third and a long yard. Nearly two yards. Gives it to Wilder and he is dumped. The Bears totally stacked up the middle. And there was nowhere to go. And a pumped up Mike Singletary said, way to go, guys. Mike Berg and he is sacked by Dan Hampton. Today by the Chicago Bears. First down from their own 32. Calvin Thomas. Hard running by the backup fullback. Wouldn't play him, would you? You were the coach? Well, it's a long season. I think it's good to give him a rest and give Gentry some work. That's Gentry number 29. Mike Ditka's uh, attitude, of course, is, hey, we've we got to have our best guys in there as long as we need to have them in. And that means a lot of time for Peyton and Suey, but it proves his pass-catching ability quite dramatically as well. Dennis Gentry. Another flag on the play, and you saw his nifty footwork getting close to a first down. But it looks like he was stopped short, and we'll see what the penalty is. Danny Spradlin made the tackle for Tampa Bay. Holding against Chicago. Is of course, they've got Keith Brown, a rookie from USC, so they've got a lot of good linebackers. Screen pass to the tight end, Saldi. First down to the 45-yard line of Tampa Bay. Cedric Brown on the tackle. You talk about a middle screen working to perfection. It was a tight end screen and the left to let those blockers go by and then sit up and be right in the right spot. Now there's Saldi, 81. He has his lineman right out in front of him and he just follows them and uh, gets the big yardage. Johnny, we saw some empty seats a moment ago. A lot of people have left because of the rain. A lot of people didn't come. There were 10,000 seats unsold as of Thursday. Of course, the Cubs are the hot story in Chicago. And the Bears wanted to get a win here today for a lot of reasons, including renewed interest by their fans. Calvin Thomas, a gain of about seven. And indeed, they were going back. It hasn't worked out for Noah Jackson and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers today. Thomas again takes a hit from Jeff Davis, number 58, but battered his way forward and looks like he has the first down. This update is that he will stay overnight for further observation in a Chicago hospital. We have no more information than that. Dennis Gentry trying to get wide was tackled by Browner who lost his helmet on the play. There's a good lead. You don't get to see that too often, a player with his helmet off. And yeah, they really get to have a look at Keith Browner. What a 55 pounder. He's going to be a dandy. Third down for the Bears and nine to go for a first down. Man continues at quarterback. Block formation right. Gentry, nowhere to go. Buccaneer defense has not budged an inch all afternoon, and they stop the Bears again. High snap, but Finzer feels it well, angling for the corner at the wobbly punt. And uh, what a nice job by, did they keep it in? No. Oh, Dave Dewardson. I was about to say what a great job he did fielding that ball at the one. San Francisco has defeated the Lions 30 to 27. What a game that was on CBS today. Steve DeBerg on first down is sacked, and the ball comes loose, and it is going to be a bear football at the one-yard line, Dan Hampton. Hampton says, hey, I'm in the end zone. Give me the touchdown. They're not going to day, Dan. Sorry, another day. This time, he's the guy that uh, gets there late, but he gets, comes up with the uh, with the fumble recovery as, whoops, you saw it. You can see McMichael and Keyes on the tackle. And it looked like he did not actually have his arm going forward, so you have to call that a fumble. And yet another turnover. Bob Avellini is coming in at quarterback. <laughs> Stefan Humphreys and Rob Feda are in at guard. Two backup guards getting some action. Humphreys, the highly touted rookie. That is Dennis uh, or Anthony Hutchison. Touchdown. 
Anthony Hutchison, the second year halfback from Texas Tech. So he was stopped, but uh, Hutchison came forth with a uh, great second effort here. Watson stopped and jammed up, keeps the legs going, and spins out of it, and then lunges and just hits the ball over the stripe, and it's a touchdown, Chicago. Tampa Bay, minus 10 yards in the second half. Tough set. DeBerg on second and 20, just got out of the end zone and got a good pass off intended for James Wilder who couldn't hold on. Well, that was, that's how they got themselves in the hole. The early drop when Thompson was in the quarterback. Early drop by the receiver. Here's a man open, Wilder. Todd Bell fell down and Wilder was wide open. There's Wilbur Marshall. <laughs> he came in with a tackle. Happened, they tangled feet. The bird did a good job here of standing his ground because there was pressure on him. He just moved a little bit forward in the pocket, threw the ball, and Todd Bell was down on the field. Wilder made it, but Bell got up and uh, has more speed than the big fullback and uh, ran him down here. And then at the end of this play, he goes out of bounds here, but number 58, the Bears' number one draft choice tackle. 50-yard gain for Tampa Bay. Deep drop by the bird. The bird has Giles open. Giles inside the 20 to the 17-yard line for Jimmy Giles and the Berg on target two in a row. The Berg has a man open. Carter, nice spinning around catch inside the five. Another first down. And he is tackled by Dave Dewerson there. Nice grab by Carter. Good catch there. In Chicago's Soldier Field, Walter Payton began his historic assault on Jim Brown's all-time rushing record with a 61-yard day against Tampa Bay. But it was the much maligned Bucks who set off the early fireworks. Number 87, Gerald Carter, scored on a 74-yard bomb. But even when John McKay's men managed to get into the end zone, the Bears' torrid pass rush was clearly evident. Finally, a quartet of sacks and numerous quarterback pressures produced six interceptions that turned the tide toward Chicago. This one by number 90, linebacker Al Harris, led to a touchdown. In his third season, Jim McMahon is now firmly entrenched as the starting quarterback. His fine play fake suckered two Buccaneer linebackers and enabled number nine to roll right and score on the beautifully executed bootleg. It was the first opening day win for Chicago since 1979. Significantly, that was the last time the team made the playoffs.